Hi everyone and welcome back, it's Vicky here with another art journal layout. Now I usually work on my moleskin or my dilutions journal, I just love the size of them, I like the quality of paper, but uh, I'm going to show you a, another type of art journal that you can work on, which is really fun and um, it really removes the pressure of working on a book and uh, you may end up with a page that you don't like. So a great idea is to work on uh, art journals like this one. And uh, these are disc bounded, which means that you can take off the page, work with any medium that you like, and then if you like the page, you can put everything back together. There are different sizes, I will be working on the 6x6 one today, but uh, there are even fun shapes such as this, which ends up being a fun circle. There are even heart-shaped uh, art journals, and I get those from Joggles, you will find links down below. So I'm going to take off one of the pages and I can work on uh, that with any medium I like. So just because I don't get the limitation of uh, this page being inside a book, I, I can work with my jelly plate, I can spray with inks without being afraid that uh, those inks might ruin the other pages. Plus the size that I chose to work with, the 6x6 one, I think is perfect for beginners since you don't have such a big area to fill in and I think it is going to remove some of the stress of uh, the beginners. Now about the paper, this is a uh, heavy watercolor paper that is going to take um, any type of medium. So you can work with acrylics, you can work with your sprays, your inks, any type of medium you like. So today I decided to do some uh, jelly printing. I'm going to apply a couple of colors on my jelly plate and this is the 6x6 size. So it's exactly the same size as my paper. I'm uh, using uh, DecoArt Media Acrylics, these are fluid acrylics, and I'm going to apply them on my jelly plate with my brayer. So I am going to bring in a stencil to place that on top of my jelly plate, just to add a little bit of interest. And now I'm ready to do my first print. So I'm placing uh, the paper directly on top of my jelly plate. I'm going to press with my fingers all over the place. And you can use your brayer for doing that if, I, if you wish so. I'm going to lift and you can see the first print. Now you will never like the first print. This is just the first layer. I will uh, start building up the layers. And um, this time I'm going to bring in some uh, green as well. And the fun part about doing uh, jelly printing is that uh, you never know what you're gonna get. And uh, the good thing is that you can always, uh, if you don't like the result, you can uh, go ahead and do even more layers on top of it until you're happy with the outcome. And of course you can mix colors, you can go really crazy with the colors that you uh, are going to use for your background. In my case I knew that I wanted to use a flower stamp and uh, I usually work with my flowers in uh, yellows, oranges, pinks and reds. So I decided to go with uh, blue and green for my background. So this is going to give the opportunity to my flowers later on to stand out against the background. Now I'm using this cream color which is going to mute the background colors just a little bit. Now I want to create a frame for my layout and that's why I'm going to do a fun technique. So I'm using a smaller jelly plate as my palette. I'm applying there my gold paint and working it with my brayer. And then I'm going to apply a thin layer of uh, acrylic paint on my bigger jelly plate, only on the sides. Now I can understand that uh, jelly printing can be a little bit overwhelming for some people, but I want to, I want to let you know all that uh, it's really fun to work with and um, it's really addictive. And uh, as you can see, I can uh, even have some type of control on uh, how my layouts are going to look. So you can see I did frame my layout there. And uh, now since I have all that paint, the gold paint on my jelly plate there, I'm going to dilute it with a little bit of water. I'm going to do some splashes and then with the rest of the paint, I'm going to go all around the edges and add even more golden paint, which is going to give a nice uh, finished look on my edges. 
Now, when you have your uh, jelly plate out on your craft table, you can uh, go ahead and create lots of different backgrounds. Just play around with your acrylic paints and uh, any type of acrylic paint would work here. So um, you can use your dilutions, you can use your distress paints, uh, any type of uh, thick paints, anything you have. Just try it out and um, you can create many different backgrounds and have them ready for another session where you will be finishing them off with your focal points. Now today I just uh, worked on this art journal so I haven't created anything else. I'm going to clean my jelly plate just with a baby wipe and it's ready to go for another time. Now these are my art foamies, these are a set of leaves and I'm going to use one of them to uh, stamp some leaves on my layout. Now I'm going to use a, a dark green uh, color of my Decomedia paint and uh, again I'm using my small jelly plate as my palette. The good thing about this is that you do not waste any paint that you apply there. So I'm going to use uh, that to work the paint so that I can apply the paint with my brayer on my stamp but at the same time I'm not wasting the paint on the jelly plate because I can always pull a print and have something ready for another time. So I'm going to do that one more time so that I can stamp one more leaf and this is what's great about art foamies. You can use acrylic paint to stamp with them, which is not something that you would normally do with your rubber stamps or your clear stamps. So all I'm doing to clean my stamp is just stamp off, make sure that it doesn't have any more uh, acrylic paint on top of it and it's ready to go. I don't bother to clean them. So now I'm using my black acrylic paint on top of a big art foamy flower. I'm going to apply the paint there and just stamp the design and you will see that it gives you a beautiful design. And I'm going to use my scissors to cut out this flower. Now I used a brush and with a fresh lime the paint by Dilutions I just fill in the leaves there so you can see that light green inside the leaves and then with my Posca a white marker I did some highlights. Now I'm going to move on and do some uh, doodling and this time I'm going to use a pen holder with some uh, ink. Now usually I would go with a thin black marker and you can definitely do that. But I found that uh, when you work with uh, a pen like this then um, you can go over different types of uh, mediums like pastes and acrylics and so many things that you might uh, put on top of uh, your mixed media layout and uh, it will not ruin your pen. So I can go as thin as I like depending on the nibs that I'm using and I know that I can always clean the nibs and they will be as brand new. So I don't have to buy uh, all the time new thin markers for my doodling that they end up uh, clogged or dry or uh, full of uh, gel medium that uh, they don't work at the end. So anyway, I'm really happy with uh, the results. I definitely suggest you to try it out. I think you will be really happy with the results. And remember, you don't have to be a calligrapher to do that. You can easily switch colors. Just clean your nib and uh, dip it in another color of ink. And remember, this is Indian ink, which means that it's going to dry permanent. So it's not going to smudge or smear, no matter what you decide to do on top of your page. So after doing some uh, doodling around my leaves, I am also going to create a border.
So after having fun creating my border, I am uh, ready to stick my flower down. I'm using uh, my matte medium to do so. And I'm also going to cover up the flower with my matte medium as well. I'm using my heat gun to speed up the drying process and then with my scissors I'm just going to cut off the excess of the flower. Now of course you can use any type of medium to color your flower, you can even create a lovely background on your jelly plate and then stamp on top the flower and uh, cut it out and stick it here. You can even stamp uh, the flower on uh, pattern paper, so many ways to do that. I decided to go with my big brush markers just because I love them and you know that. One great thing about these markers is that they are translucent. As you can see, although I'm going all over the place with uh, the black lines and everything, they do not cover up the black lines, which is something that I absolutely love about those markers when I want to color in uh, images with black lines. So now I'm going to go on the inside of the petal to add a darker color. And then I will uh, go ahead and add an even darker color to the center, which is going to help my flower look dimensional and help it pop against the background. When you heat set the ink, it's going to turn uh, the ink into permanent, so you will not be able to move it anymore. Now with my Posca white pen, I'm going to add some white dots at the center of my flower and I'm going to embellish my flower as much as I can. I'm just playing around here and having fun with my mediums. So I'm going to add some white dots at the perimeter of the flower and I think this is a lovely flower design for art journaling. And I like the size of it, it's nice and big, so it is uh, going to uh, be a real focal point on your pages. I also used my white Posca thin pen to add some highlights around my flower, but they don't show as much as I wanted to, so you will see later on at some point on this video that I will go over them with the thick Posca pen. And I'm just doing some finishing touches here and there, so adding some shadow on my leaves. And for my quote, I decided to go with this sticker book by Tim Holtz, and this is the Big Chat sticker book. So I'm going to choose some of uh, the stickers here to create my quote, which is going to end up saying, choose to be happy. I'm going to stick them down on my layout. And it is always a good idea if you are using uh, stickers to go over them with your matte medium or add some uh, glue at the back just to make sure that they are going to be nicely stuck there. And now finally I'm going to go around uh, the perimeter of those stickers with my pen holder and my ink there. Now I like how white those stickers are, they stand out against the background. If you don't like that look, you can always color them, go over them with uh, some ink to blend them more with the background. I'm also adding some white splashes, which is something I always like to do. This is just white gesso diluted with water. And finally, I'm going to add some texture with my embossing paste. This is gold embossing paste. I'm going to use this very loved stencil to add some um, paste in uh, different areas of my layout. And if you notice the flower now, you will see the um, thicker highlights that I added on top of uh, the thinner ones that I did earlier on, just by using my thicker Posca pen. So that's it. My layout is ready. I'm going to stamp the date. And I'm going to put this page back on my book. So I have my first uh, art journal uh, page on this book ready to go. Now notice that the page is uh, quite heavy so it hasn't um, warped at all and I can easily work at the back if I want to. Now this art journal doesn't have a cover but I would suggest to stick two pages together to make them heavier and you can turn this into your cover. In my future art journal videos, I will be sharing more ideas on what you can do on this book, as well as on my normal art journal books that I usually work with. So I hope you had fun, you got inspired. Definitely give this um, disc bound art journal a try. I think you will really love it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.